I want to talk to you today about some things that uh, are dear to my heart, but things that God, God is, I'll say like this, God has a sense of humor and um, he has a way of breaking um, uh, the word to you in a way that you will receive it and I, you will be able to apply it to yourself. And so um, I want to start off today by giving you the word of the Lord. And so I'll give you the scriptures that I'm going to be reading from um, Isaiah 43, 18 uh, through 19. And that's going to be the King James Version. And I will read it to you. Uh, remember, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And then I'm going to read to you uh, Matthews 9, 16 through 17, the Amplified uh, uh, Bible version. Um, but no one puts a piece of unshrunk new cloth on an old garment for the patch pulls away from the garment and a worse tear results nor is uh, is new wine put into old wine skins that have lost their elasticity otherwise the wine skins burst and the fermenting wine spills and the wine skins are ruined but new wine is put into fresh wine skins set so that both are preserved and so you'd have to be um uh, a little older to understand or someone who deals with fabric or has dealt with fabric in their day. Um, when we uh, were learning how to sew, you had to make sure that you uh, wash the cloth and you could not uh, start sewing on the garment until you washed the cloth because you wanted to know if it was going to shrink or not. And you had to make sure you washed it and you dried it and ironed it before you started, you know, doing cutting a pattern or anything like that, because if it, um, you may not have enough fabric, just because it may be a uh, fabric that would shrink. And so cotton was known to shrink a lot. And, um, and so that was something that we always did in our training. That was the first thing that you had to do was make sure that fabric was laundered before you could start your pattern. So, um, you know, last Sunday, being the first Sunday of January, I woke up and I was praising the Lord and I just, um, you know, I was praying before God and uh, it was really interesting. It just, um, my praise time became kind of quiet and he gave me this word change and it just entered my spirit and, um, and it wasn't like it was a whisper, <laughs> It was like it was a command, and it was, and I was somewhat puzzled at first, and then I sat there, and I said, ah, uh, but in my knower, I knew that God was commanding me to change, and, um, and it, you know, you know the difference between a request <laughs> and a command, and this was much more serious, and I thought, oh, Lord, what have I done now? But it is, it, it was just interesting. I just kept praying. And so um, this morning, I want to dive into the word change. Change. Because we're really at a crossroad of change. And to be able to do what God himself is calling us to do in this hour and in the future, there has to be change. And um, in transparency, I will read some of the portion of the word that the Lord gave me. He said, you must prepare. Change is not something that is big. Change starts small. It starts with a change of heart, a change of your mind, a shift in your thinking, your outlook, your way of speaking, the manner in which you process things in the organ of your thoughts. Change happens when you plan and you follow through on the plan. I said, oh, Lord. I got some work to do. And I said, okay, God, all right. And I knew it was serious and I didn't take it lightly. 
And so um, last Sunday, we were given uh, different words. We were given instructions. Uh, we were told to forgive, uh, to let go of isms and schisms. Uh, one of the words that was used last Sunday was strategy. And so, you know, our headship um, uh, broke the word really well. Uh, um, choices, let go of mess and giants in our own life, restoration, improve your health, get a wheel, an advanced directive, take small steps, ask for advice, get counsel, forgive, and then if necessary, ask for forgiveness. So we learned a lot of those things last Sunday and that we have to apply moving forward. So change, what, what is change? Um, as a verb, it's an action word, and it says make something or someone different. Replace something with something. So you're replacing something with something else. And as a noun, it's the act of or instance of making or becoming different. So similar words that people use are like adjustment, advance, development, differences, innovation, modification, revision, revolution, shift, switch, transformation, transition, adjust, and alter. Wow, that's a lot. Well, Matthew 9, 16 through 17 says, again, but no one puts a piece of unshrunk, that means a new cloth, on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and a worse tear results. Nor is new wine put into old wineskins that have lost their elasticity. Okay. Otherwise, the wine skins burst and the fermenting wine spills and the wine skins are ruined. But new wine is put into fresh wine skins. So both are preserved. So, where God kind of was dealing with me, and you know, He's going to deal with all of us in our own different way because change has to happen in all of us. So, it's um, there's no lone rangers out there. Everybody gets a little change that's going to have to happen. Um, so the Lord dealt with me on my old way of thinking and processing. And it was not going to allow me to launch forward in what God has in store. Even my wine skin, my flesh has to change. Because it will not hold the new wine, my spirit man will not hold the new wine and the anointing in the manner that God would have if I continue in the manner that I've been going. And so it, it caused me to go a little deeper. So what habits do I have that are not <laughs> pleasing before the Lord? You know, habits. Um, you know, all of us have some habits that just are not good. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so uh, God had been dealing with me towards the end of the year. But and now that morning, that January 1st morning, he, he was nailing this thing. He said, I'm going to nail this to, we're nailing this to the cross. You're going you're gonna to either go forward or you are going to miss out on what God has for you. What I have for you is greater than where you're at, but you've got to be willing to change. So the word habit uh, is, is like, wow. Okay, what's a habit? It's just an automatic response to a specific situation. So let me give you an example. I love to wear a certain <laughs> pair of tennis shoes. Now, do I have other pair of tennis shoes? Yes. My daughter uh, makes sure that I am equipped with other pair of tennis shoes. And I have to laugh because she rolls her eyes when she sees these. And, um, but they're comfortable. 
Um, that's a sample of one thing, but you know what, that, that tennis shoe situation, it actually goes deeper. There is a mule somewhere, a stubborn mule <laughs> inside of me somewhere. And I just want to go back to that pair of tennis shoes, but it goes deeper. See, that pair of tennis shoes is the surface of what you see. What's under the surface? What you don't see. That's causing me to go back to what's comfortable and not moving forward and breaking in something that's uncomfortable. Okay. So, um, because I, I let me just even really be real transparent this morning so that you can really understand what I'm talking about. I'm not one to really go buy clothes, shoes. Um, it, it's like, okay, there has to be something that I have to do to be able to go do that. Otherwise, thank God for a child that actually loves me and, and wants to see her mother to look good. And um, and so sometimes there's a struggle and it's not the struggle with her, it's the struggle in me. So the tiny shoe thing goes deeper and God is unearthing that thing in me. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, he is. And so he wants me to be prepared. He wants us all to be prepared for, you know, what is ahead of us. And he wants us to not only be prepared spiritually, he wants us to look the part. He wants us to live the part. He wants us to talk the part. He wants us to walk the part. Uh, you know, he, he wants us to get it together. You know, um, all these things that are hanging on us, he wants us to drop them, to move forward, those weights. So let's talk about habits. Okay. So, um, and, I, and let me say this to you, change is not comfortable, but it's necessary. So there's a book that I've been reading and thank God for this book. Uh, it's Atomic Habits by John Clear. It's a good book. I, I suggest that to anyone to get that book. It's really a great book. And what uh, Mr. Clear talks about, he says, um, he talks about atomic habits and the power in small habits that make a big difference. He says, it's so easy to overestimate the importance of one defining moment and underestimate the value of making small improvements on a daily basis, like walking, eating right, getting enough rest, taking your vitamins, getting a checkup, studying your word. Praising and worshiping, praise and worshiping God, praying in your prayer language daily, just to name a few. Okay. Those are small habits that are worth forming. He goes on to state that improving 1% isn't particularly notable. Sometimes it isn't particularly noticeable, but it can be far more meaningful, especially in the long run. 1%, just 1%, 1%, not something big, not something with such magnitude, but just 1%, one little thing, walking, okay? Instead of picking up the cupcake, pick up celery, carrots or something. Got to have a little ranch with it. No, <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, just making a switch, just a little switch, you know, a little switch, just that 1%. So I, I was like, wow, that is really something. So someone who you know that you see on the TV all the time, Al Roker. Now, you know, he just went through this health bout. But what he said that his doctor said if he had not been in the healthy state of life that he was in, he would have not made it through this latest crisis. But because he had been walking and taking care of himself and by the grace of God and the prayers of the righteous, he's alive. Him and his wife, Deborah, talked about really because he was intentional about making a difference in his life. And, and Al Roker has gone through many surgeries, but this was so to the point where it shut him down 
and it was going to shut his life off. He was going to die. But because he had prepared by doing the 1%, the walking every day and changing his diet, Al Roker was in a health, healthy position so that when all those blood clots hit his system, he was healthy enough to be able to rebound and the doctors had something to work with instead of nothing, okay? So just a little change. Just a little change. And, and God is commanding us, not just me, he's commanding all of us to form new habits, good habits. Just 1%, just 1%, you know, just 1%. And so I want to go on and read um, Isaiah 43, 18, 19 through 19. And it's the King James Version. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, God is saying to all of us today, I have led you out. I have delivered you from the former things. I've saved you from death. And some of us, literally, he has saved us from death because there's been testimonies of how God, there has been cancer cases, there's been just all kinds of things that has happened, but God has delivered us from that literally. And now he says, I have something better for you. I have a new thing, a new life, new health, new wealth. Did you not know? That is why you have to take you had to take the long way around. Sometimes we didn't get it the first time. And so then we stayed in that position, just like the children uh, of Israel. They stayed in the same position because they did not learn the lesson. They had to go around and around and around. Well, God said, you know, because like we were wondering, why didn't we get this? And why didn't we get that? And why, why isn't that? And why isn't this? And why isn't that? Well, we went the long way around so that we can appreciate the position he has us in now. And he says, now it shall spring forth. It's going to require you to keep moving forward, not looking back, not becoming a lot's wife, but looking forward, not being comfortable in our old wine skin, our old way, our old habits. He said, but to open yourself up to the new wine, and what God has for you. Because there's new wine, new life, abundantly. He said, I give you life more abundantly. There's abundant life that he has for us. There's new opportunities. There's new territory that he has for us. So he's saying, I want you to open yourself up. I don't want an unshrunk cloth putting on an old, on a garment. Because I don't want the tears. I don't want the old things to seep in. I want you to be ready to go forward to what I have for you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So I want to give you another line from Mr. Clear. Your outcomes are a measure of your habits. It will multiply whatever you feed it. Good habits make time your ally. In Al Roker's case, time, his good habits became his ally in his health. What is God saying to you to form in this year at the beginning of this year? We're at the beginning of the year. We really started the year in October, okay? But the reality is now we are launching forward. So what good habits do you need to form? What old habits do you need to let go? 
What do you need to make sure is in order in your life? What change, change do you need to make? So I want you just for a moment, I just want you for a moment to just stop and think. Let, let's take two minutes because sometimes we just move too quickly. And we don't think about what we need to do. Just take two minutes. We're going to take two minutes and we're going to think about this. Because God is going to put something. He's going to nail something. And it's going to sear in your spirit. Thank you.